Welcome to Chasing Hard Podcast, where we talk about trusting God when life doesn't turn out the way you planned. Like I say almost every time, if you've been alive for any amount of time, then you have experienced at least one or a dozen times when life didn't turn out the way you planned, whether big or small, just a hiccup or a total detour. That's life. It's, it doesn't always turn out the way we plan. I am so excited that I have a guest to talk, a real person to talk to, and not just a real person, but a returning guest and a personal friend. Amy, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks. It's awesome to be back. Ah, so good to see your face. So I know that you have had at least one time that life didn't go the way you planned. And I know this, I've watched, and I don't, haven't known you that long. So, but I have watched you struggle as you've watched me and hopefully we've helped each other figure out how to trust God with these things we don't understand. Um, it didn't go how we thought it was going to go. We could probably talk for hours, but um, what's we, on your heart today? I think it's one of the things. So I had a break week this week and I had big intentions of what I was going to do. And one of them was to spend some time with God, just, just processing recent pain and, and, and trying to, to remember that even though I can't see a clear path forward, I know my Bible says that God has a good plan, Old Testament, New Testament, Mm -hmm. but and and one of the things that I keep coming back to, in fact, I put it in my notes that I scroll through often, don't confuse people with God mm. and don't confuse mm. circumstances with God's character. And that's really what I'm holding on to right now mm. to help me to trust. That's good. I heard something interesting the other day, um, and it was talking about the season that we're in as, as Americans in upcoming election. And, and it seems like we're, we're either way more involved in elections these days, or it's, it's more emotional and it divides us more. But here's the thing I was reminded of that God appoints the leader, whether we like it or not, whether we understand it or not, whether it's our candidate or not for his purposes, that's the part that stuck with me. Um, and I think it applies on a personal level as well. God appoints the things that we encounter, the people he brings into our lives, the situations, the relationships for his purpose. And I don't always like the purpose. And I don't always know the purpose. But when I think I do, I don't necessarily like it. And we don't have to because God is God and we are not. Right. And that's, that's actually a good thing to remember. Yeah. Um, because in in my humanness, I can look through the the landscape of my past and go, yeah, I would call down fire and brimstone. I would judge that, and then I and then when I get like that, and what's interesting is I've been learning a lot about lament, and mm-hmm. in the Bible, the Psalms are full of lament. Mm-hmm. We can pour out our complaint and God, look at what they've done and they've dishonored your name and they've hurt me and they've done this. And, and you can pour out your complaint and all of its rawness and all of what you wish God would do. And yet they mostly end with this idea of, but you're God and you're good and you know what you're doing. And I, in my limited perspective can look back and go, I I don't understand. Right a lot of it and what I do understand, I wish it had been kinder. (laughs) And and I think sometimes maybe I'm just so stubborn that God has to, to really, really, really make it clear. Like I would hang on to Mm. a trauma kid. I I will hang on to every bit of security I get, Mm -hmm. even if it's really killing me. And, (laughs) and I really think God is, I mean, yeah, I've heard that's that's kind of normal <laughs> for people like us. Yeah. Um, but I think in in if I look at God through the lens of scripture, even in the things that I wish were kinder, mm-hmm. like, okay, you're prying 
my scared, terrified little girl hands Mm -hmm. off of things that aren't good for me. And it's okay for me to be scared. It's okay for me to, to be angry and to be hurt and, and to pour out all Mm -hmm. those emotions. But the only way I get up from that is if I remember, Oh, but you're God, you're good. And you love me, even if it doesn't feel like like it. it. Yeah, I, I agree. And as I listen to you talk and I, and I know this about you, that you, you, you do take a lot of time to process and maybe not even process, but with God figuring things out. Um, I think uh, I'm a little older than you, so maybe this is, this is why, um, (laughs) but I, I decided, and I don't think it was consciously that I, this is how, this is how I survived, survived my past that I really don't like and wouldn't have chosen except I wouldn't have got some of the blessings that I got. You know what I'm talking about. Um, Is to, I mean, I do question, but to be okay with not knowing and not understanding so that I don't even spend a whole lot of time. I mean, I do spend some time and then I'm like, so what? Like this is, it doesn't change anything. This is where I'm at. Yeah. And, And so just making peace with the fact that things happen that we don't like and don't understand and we feel like could have been handled quite differently in a kinder nicer way um I I would I would get stuck there and I have gotten stuck there I think um I spent a lot of time and energy trying to change the past which it's futile and a waste of time it is what it is I think we, I think the difference, and I've been listening to a lot of, a lot of trauma podcasts and just some interesting things about how, if if we don't process it, if we don't, if we don't work through it, we're going to keep repeating it. And and I've seen that pattern in my life. And, and I find out, I I mean, I went to, I mean, I have a psychology degree Mm. going back to school to get another one. And I'm like, great, here we go again. Yeah. Um, I'm going to listen to the wisdom of Mm -hmm. it's I have lived my life as a trauma kid pushing through survival strength and been praised for that. And then I got to the point in my life where I couldn't keep pushing Mm -hmm. and kind of what you said, I I can't keep going back there. I can't fix it. I can't change Mm -hmm. it. I don't even think I can change me. And so, you know, it's kind of this throwing up my hands and I'm going to resign myself to just, to just getting by. And I don't have that soul. Like my, there's just something about me that I I won't, I won't sit down, do more, try harder or shut up. Like I just can't do it. And I'm trying to learn ways to do that. (laughs) better in the sense of, well, maybe not better. I'm trying to learn ways to close my mouth and listen to what my, my soul is crying. And my heart is to take that to God. Mm-hmm. That's what I hope I'm learning. Mm-hmm. Not, not just rehashing the past, yes. but going this hurt. Why did it hurt? Oh, it mm-hmm. touched that. Oh, I'm afraid of that. Okay, Lord, now I need you to, to, to heal that now. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I think it's different in the sense of, I think a lot of people ruminate on the past yeah, for sure. or give up. And I think that the truth lies somewhere different than either one of those extremes. Oh. Like we still have to process it. We still yeah. have to touch what we don't want to think about. True. We don't always have to understand it. So I agree with you in that. I think I've come to that place where I'm like, I, I, I can't understand it all. Right. Um, and, and I guess maybe... I don't, I'm tired of trying to understand it. All. <laughs> so do I trust God or not? Like, I don't I, understand. Do I trust God or not? It, it's sometimes that it's as simple as that for me. Yeah. Um, something that you said just now reminded me of, I think you said you grew up being applauded for your ability to plow through or whatever. It reminds me of, of years ago, I wrote a blog post and it was called, don't tell me I'm strong. I, I got really tired of people um, 
telling me, you know, how strong I was and they couldn't do what I did. And they, that, that ticked me off. Like that, to me, that was, that was dishonoring. I, yeah. I know they didn't mean it to be dishonoring, yeah. but you, you know, you don't know how you'd respond unless you walk in my shoes. Like you don't know. And it's not really being strong. It's just surviving. Right. And you don't know what that cost me. Right. You yes. don't know what, what yes. tore my soul to pieces yes. to put that smile on. Yeah. Like, yeah. Honor the fact that survive. Well, and what I'm learning now is to honor that survival strength because mm -hmm. God used it to keep me breathing. Right. And, and, but also to honor that there is a, there are other strengths that we can draw from. Mm. It's not just do more, try harder, be better. That mm. that's not the message of scripture. Right. Um, that that's not the message we need to internalize. The message is we are weak, but he is strong. Mm. And I, I don't want to live in that situational strength. And so in the process of learning more integrated strength, more taking care of my soul, more, mm -hmm. you know, being that touchy feeling, not that strong person, but, but getting in touch with the fact that, that I do have really strong emotions and I have a tendency to run my mouth and put those together <laughs> and it gets me in trouble. <laughs> so I'm learning that, mm -hmm. that as I'm, I'm hopefully walking more in integrated and then, transitional strength to integrated strength from a book that I really love. It's called strong like water. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just learning that it's okay to take care of my soul. Mm -hmm. It's okay to admit that I'm, I'm really, I'm not okay. And I don't understand. And right. I want to understand. And, and God made me with that personality. Yes. I, I mean, I have a teacher's gifting mm -hmm. and, and I love to understand so that I can explain and God is going, yeah, I gave that gift to you. Mm -hmm. You still have to surrender it to me. I'm like, oh, right. I don't get to tell the master teacher what he should be doing. <laughs> Shoot. I know. It's, a, <laughs> it's an interesting life. Um, yeah. Something that you said triggered another thought, which has just left the building. Um but oh, what was it? Because I was just talking with someone and maybe it was about boundaries. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that those come in when you have strong opinions and the ability to vocalize them, I'll call it. To, you know, to know when, when you should and when you shouldn't and to have a personal boundary because you're, you're taking care of, of your soul the boundary really isn't, hey, this is here. Don't talk to me. The boundary is I'm going to choose not to say all those things that I could say because I'm going to take care of me right now. And I know it's not going to end well. And I think that helps a lot too. I didn't always understand boundaries. Um, and, and it's still easy to forget them at times. Yeah. It's still easy dag on it to get back caught up in the old patterns and then yes. Finally, finally, I, I'm stopping. I can stop myself and say, what, what are you doing? What have you been doing? Why are you doing this? You've done this. You've been there. Where's, you know, let's go back to that boundary. Um, that's, that is not only God honoring, but honoring to me and to the person or persons that I'm not en engaging with on certain subjects. It's just best for everybody involved. Yeah. And I think that's what a healthy boundary is. It's best for not just me, but Right. Right. It's so that I am taking responsibility for my reactions and my responses and not exploding on you. Right. And that, that is a healthy boundary. Yes. And for me, I keep going, okay, Lord, I've surrendered this. Could you just put a guard over my mouth? Like <laughs> guard over my really? mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just need you to make it close <laughs> so that I pray yeah. first and talk less and, and it's, yeah, but then also I, I think it's important to have healthy friendships and relationships where you can 
blow that boundary or say the wrong thing. And they'll, oh, absolutely. You, you know, they'll call you and go, I love you, but that was really not okay. Mm. And to be able to walk through the process of, okay, let's unpack what happened. You said this, I felt that I said this. Oh yeah. Like I just did that today. Mm. And it's like, Oh, right. <laughs> That's what I was doing. I was once again, thinking that everything was great. And and I hit something without wanting to see that that I, I was speaking out of fear. I was reacting mm. out of fear. Um, so my hope is that I'll start listening more too, because I, I really do believe it was the Holy Spirit again after the fact, mm-hmm. <laughs> but maybe not days and days after the fact. So that's a good thing. Yeah, for sure. That is good. And you can catch on sooner. Um, yeah. That reminds me of, of something else I don't like. <laughs> about personalities and people um there there are just you know certain types of people that are hard for me to not get along I can get along with anyone and but I have to go process it afterwards you know because they push my buttons and and what I've learned and what I so dislike about that is that typically what I don't like about them is what I don't like about me. And even a little deeper is I'm a little resentful or a lot that they get to be that way. And I can't like, why can't like, why? Hey, (laughs) Hey God. Um, Like I can't be that way. And I'm, I want to be that way. I mean, not really, but the little girl inside of me that needs wants to be that way. And Why can't I get away yes. with what they can get away with? Yes. Like, how come you keep messing with me, Lord? And you yeah. keep like, I, I get that the Lord disciplines those he loves. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but what about <laughs> what, what them? About them? It's, yeah. It's like when you're a little kid and your brother or sister is like, what, but what about them? Yeah. yeah. I was and I'm never that. the one that gets away with it. I'm always the one that gets caught. And maybe I should be, maybe I'll come to a place in my life where I'm thankful that the Lord loves me so much so that he's much. like, nope. Nope. And I'm like, how about catch me before I do it? How about make me sensitive before I say that wrong thing? So I was talking with a a old friend, good friend, um, just earlier this week, and she's a recovering alcoholic addict and has worked really hard in the past few years to, to, to walk that path. And the growth that I've seen is, is, is real it's amazing and it's real because it's it's been a part of who she is for a while now and that's really cool but as we were talking back back and forth um i t- said to her like sometimes i want to be the addict like i i want to be the one who gets to do all the things i don't want to be the one who cleans up the mess to be the responsible one and obviously <laughs> i really don't want to be the addict And obviously it's really not my responsibility to clean up everybody's mess. It just feels like that sometimes and seems like that. Um, Because I think what we're talking about here is relationships. And it's hard. Relationships are hard. And our relationship with God is hard because we're human and thankfully he's not. And he understands that. He has that compassion and and that that's what it helps me to remember. And I I, I get what you're saying about wanting to be the addict. (laughs) I want to be the two-year-old throwing a temper tantrum. I want somebody else to step in and call me. I don't want to be the mom all the time. I I want somebody to take care of me. I think a lot of, a lot of people didn't get that. And so we've got a lot of adults running around. Some of us who are far more comfortable in that mom role. I'll take care of everybody, but still deep inside, I think all of us is that little kid who Mm -hmm. just, I'm like, but what about me? When, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think I heard somebody a long, long time ago talk about how we keep holding out this cup, this cup full of holes to everybody else. You know, Mm -hmm. will you take care of me? Will you take care of me? Will you take care of me? Will you fill me? And we don't take it to the one person who actually can. Right. I'm like, oh, Lord, how long, how many times yeah. do I have to learn that lesson? And even, uh, and even sometimes we do take it to the one person who actually can, and we still are running around trying right. to. And I think that's a natural human thing as well. 
Yeah. Sometimes we just get so desperate that that we are trying anything and everything that we can do while we're waiting for God to do his, you know, to do what he wants to do. But it's it's so overwhelming that we run around trying to find someone who can help in some small way. Yeah. And and this, does that mean that we're not trusting God? Does that mean that we're sort of trusting God? I don't even know what it means. And maybe I don't have to know. I think the fact I said that I've said this before. I, I think the difference between a believer and a non-believer in terms of sin is that the Christian struggles like mm-hmm. non-believers. That's I mean, true. they may, I, I wasn't a Christian. I didn't become a Christian until I was 15. So I remember mm-hmm. what it was like. And, and, and I remember, I mean, I, I grew up in a mm-hmm. home that I felt guilty about everything. So mm-hmm. I felt guilty, but it didn't stop me from doing what I did. And but as a Christian, it, it's not so much the it's not the guilt and shame. It's the, oh, that's not who I am. And that, when I can get to that, mm-hmm. that compels me to go, right, Lord, you, okay. you are not guilting and shaming me. You are that's not good. the one condemning me. You love me. And mm-hmm. you understand that I, I daily feel like this this crying little two-year-old but I have to put on this face and I'm afraid that most people see a face of just Mm -hmm. anger and grit when it's really fear yes yeah it's becoming my prayer to say Lord I'm afraid that's good but I'm gonna trust you because the scripture says right um and that's I mean that's how fear often shows up is is anger because that that gives us some kind of a sense of control, I think that we can. Um, yeah, it's more powerful to feel angry than it is. Of to course, feel angry. it is for sure. So, I think there's a difference too in being a Christian, a believer, and a follower. And that reminds me of how I grew up because I was raised in a Christian home and, and received Jesus as my savior. At a, at a pretty early age and knew that I needed to even way before then. Like, I think I was 11 when I accepted Jesus as my savior. He wasn't my Lord. I was still my Lord. I would even tell him after, as a teenager, you know, being out partying with my friends, I love you. Um, you know, I would come home from a night out and probably buzzing a little bit. And I would sit on my bed and, and get my, um, I think it was the way Bible. It's just which was the like the message just back mm-hmm. in the in the day and and i would i would say to god I, I love you i believe in you but like i want to do this right now like one day one day i'll follow you but right now i'm gonna do this which the audacity and the love of the father to <laughs> protect me in my stupidity um but i think that's the difference because even the the, the devil bo- or the demons believe yeah. Um, so there are a lot of believers. It doesn't necessarily make you a follower. Right. And there's a difference because you and I are followers. We strive to know Christ and to please Christ and to allow him to do what he wants to do in our lives and within us. Um, so we believe we're believers and followers. I think. Right. There's a difference. Yeah, there is. And, and I think it's, I just, I think we have to keep reminding, I had a conversation recently about, well, you know, People that don't feel like, and and I've been there too regularly, like I don't feel like I've had an impact and and I've had friends go, but you've done this and this, Mm -hmm. this and this. And I go, oh, like I forget Mm -hmm. that because right now I'm sitting in the, but I'm not okay right Right. now. And I don't know that I was okay then, but God still used me and I'm starting to go, oh, wait, that's true. I will never on this earth be perfect. I will never on this earth be perfectly healed. I am in that process, but I have a God that is not bothered by my process. He's not upset or angry or anxious. He's the dad that I need. Mm -hmm. He is the one that's going, come, just come Mm -hmm. and and I find when I remember that and when I remind others of that, that, that we're preaching the gospel to each other and we need that. Right. We need to be reminded 
not just of the fact that the God has used us for things that yes. we may never know, right? but that God is still at work in us and through us. Amen to that. And I wanted to say something that you said just a minute ago, um, that you thought people just saw the grit and anger. I always saw the grit. Like, I mean, you, I never thought of you as an angry person. I still don't. I mean, though I know you can be because I've, <laughs> we, we've sat in that together, mine, yours, you know, together. Um, yeah, I, I know that I know you to be a person of grit and a, a woman who, even when you don't understand, are, are always trying to honor God. Um, yeah, I think that's what people see and not whatever you, that ang. Yeah, I don't think, I don't, I don't <laughs> oh, think people see you that way. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because I'll, I'll talk to people and I'll say something about, man, I wish I, you know, I wish I didn't come across this way. And they're like, what are you talking yeah, about? Right. Like, no, I think you, I, it, it always cracks me up when there are people, especially newer friends that'll be like, well, I think you're just like the most amazing and kind and you laugh and you're happy. And I'm thinking, Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Maybe. Okay. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. God is doing that work and that's a great thing. I, I don't, I'm not trying to fake it. I, I promise right. I, that's not how I want to live. Um, but I think it's funny. I'm like, oh, good. Well, then the Holy Spirit is coming through more than yeah, I thought, I so. <laughs> which is a good no, thing. No, I think so. I mean, and I think we need to be reminded that, you know, we aren't always, we don't always appear to be the person that we, you know, the, the person, yeah. the angry person or whatever. Um, yeah, because I can get pretty caught up in in the emotions and be kind of shocked that people um don't see me that way at all even at my worst of times I think we have to remember we aren't our emotions our emotions are not. Are they're they are indicators that right. we need something we're not getting and and I I came from an angry home I struggled mm -hmm. battled and um interestingly enough I had a, a thyroid disorder that caused me to have what they call thyroid rage and it was i remember that mm. that that journey that i was on i can go back to some of those moments and go i just yelled and i didn't i, I didn't want to like right. i'm in my head yeah. going this is not me and trying to pray and trying to and then to find out nobody told me that mm. my body was hijacking wow my who I am right. and thankfully God was gracious and that didn't last very long and and all the work I'd done was not for nothing um I ended up having to have surgery and I remember coming home from that surgery and going oh this is what peace feels like like I got wow. I, I feel more me than I have in in a year wow. and it, it was just so so I think I don't know I guess what I take from that is We've got to remember, we've got to let Jesus tell us who we really are mm -hmm. and to let him point out when we're not acting in that right. so that he can do that work in our hearts. Yeah, that's good. Um, and we, we are not our emotions and we are not our past and we are not our experiences. And another thing about emotions is like God gave us our emotions mm -hmm. to use appropriately. Correct. And and sometimes I don't. I don't. Right. Sometimes I don't. And I don't have a thyroid thing. Like I just don't. You know, well, I, that was I, just a, a small part of that story. <laughs> there was still a lot. Um, I worked with a great trauma therapist. I mean, she was amazing and just piecing together my past things that I didn't know. Like mm. I would react to things that just didn't make sense to me. Yeah. And I have a counseling degree. Like I said, sure. I knew something was wrong. I just couldn't touch it. And it wasn't until God in his sovereign wisdom knew the moment in which my body and my soul and my mind mm. were ready to come back together. Um, so I, I think, I think we really have to learn to give ourselves grace Yes. That that those of us that that know the Lord and and seek after Him and even some days don't seek after Him like yes. don't want to do it want right. to give up you know we've all been there and yes. I'll be there <laughs> it, 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 
at any given day. Um, so I don't say that to be shaming at all. <laughs> no, I get um, it. But I think we have to remember that that again, we aren't our emotions, we aren't our past, and we are all in process. And the God who created us knows us better than we know ourselves. And he knows the perfect time to allow certain pieces of the puzzle to snap into place and and that healing to be something we actually Mm -hmm. experience. And I love it when those moments happen, Mm -hmm. Um, but like all mountaintops, there's a lot of work to get there. (laughs) For sure. I know um, even with EMDR, which I've told you was a game changer for me. um, And I think it took, the amount of time that it took for me to get to a place where I was ready for that. And I had like the first couple of sessions, like I knew that, she, you know, my therapist introduced it and said we were going to do it the next time. And I wanted to, I didn't really, I think I was afraid that it wasn't going to work because I didn't understand it's the simplicity of it. And how can that do anything? And so um, that when I went in for that, for the first session, the guys brought up a topic and it was a legitimate topic and it had just happened and it was good that we processed it, but we didn't get into MDR and I was okay with that. Um, and I think I had to, to be ready. I think the next time I just had to get the mindset and I think we did do it this, this the next time, but God knows when we're ready for, to be in a place where he can do some work in us. Um, not that it's the end all be all, but it helped for me, it, that helped tremendously in me being able to understand that I don't have to react. And there was something that changed and how, I can't even explain it, how your brain is sort of rewired around certain trauma situations. And that is weird and bizarre as the process was, it really did help. It really did work. Yeah. EMDR, EMDR was a game changer for me too. Um, it, it just, it, it allowed me to, to be safe enough in my own body, in my own mind to go, okay, let's remember this and let's, yeah. let's process it. So like I had kept so much walled off it, my therapist using EMDR and a lot of other techniques, mm. we were just able to work through calmly. It went faster than I really wanted it to, but I kind of needed that. Yeah. I mean, it was like once the wall came down, man, it was like we are on the Audubon going 500 miles an hour. And I'm like, here we go. Um, and and I'm still working out some of the stuff that we process. Like yeah. I'm still having to remember some of the things that I learned. And and I think that's that's life. And yeah. I also love that, that God, I mean, I love that there's that, that prayer in the Bible of that man with his, his son who was being thrown into the fire and he's, and Jesus said, do you believe? And he's like, I believe, help my help unbelief. Believe. Yeah. And I think it's true. I trust you, Lord, help no, me. Trust when you. I don't, right. That, that's not a prayer. That, that is a prayer of faith. That it is. is a prayer of trust. It is. You're right. And I think really what all we've been talking about is just different ways of coming back to that reality that, that we are all in process and Mm -hmm. we who know the Lord who are following him, we're not going to be perfect. And and he's not the one telling us to be like, we've got systems (laughs) and families and work and lots of places that that say, you know, do more, be better, try harder, but that's not God. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's saying, let me like, surrender to me mm-hmm. and, and let me do that work in you. And mm-hmm. that's when that work and, and that next step in healing and, and that that's growth good. and faith comes. That's good. That is good. Um, and I was going to give you a, a chance to uh, say a last minute thing, and that may have been your last minute thing because that <laughs> was really good. Um, but if there, is there anything else that you would want to say to a person who's really struggling with trying to trust God to, while trying to figure all of the things out that didn't happen the way they thought. I would just say what I, I wish I would say, I wish I would say this to myself. I wish people had said this to me mm-hmm. and I try to be that person who says this over and over and over again to others and, and to myself. God loves you. God knows you. 
God accepts you. He is never ashamed. Like the, the gospels say over and over again, then scripture as a whole say that God knows us. He knows our doubts. He knows our fears. He knows our traumas. He knows everything. Just be like, just be mm. breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe. Yeah. And, and know that God is there and, and he will be that breath. I mean, there have been many moments in my life that I really felt like I could not take another breath, that all I could do was say Jesus. And somehow he was my next breath. Right. And, and that is okay. It is. And I think we have to give ourselves the grace. Yeah, we do. To say, it's okay to be there. Right. And we won't always be there. This is so, true. And sometimes the most profound prayer is help. Yeah. Because it's a prayer of surrender and it's all you, it's all you have sometimes. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'm really excited that I got to talk with a person today and I'm glad it was you. So thank you well, for taking time out of your day to be here. It was great. Thanks for having me. Oh. Um, just, I, I'm going on vacation. And so I'm, there, there will not be a new podcast up next in two weeks, I guess mainly because my editor, my son will be with me on vacation. So I haven't, I didn't really get a chance to figure out how we could do that. So, um, there won't be one after this one, there won't be one. So anyway, thank you for joining us. I will be back in two weeks. I hope you are too.